So I will not speak about official policies, but about work uh, in progress. Let me spend first uh, some word about uh, the Secretariat. It is uh, a small group, 40 people, all in all, bringing together also trainees, other staff uh, with uh, short-term contracts. In reality, the core is 20, 25 people. They are led by me and by Thomas Pelton, who I would like really to thank because he has been the person who has been thinking, preparing, and bringing forward the program for this conference. Many of the colleagues uh, of the Secretariat are here. I would like really to thank uh, Eva, Shirley, <coughs> and Beatrice, who may be somewhere, who are those who have been preparing everything <coughs> for today. Obviously, the Secretariat is multinational. It's not, uh, it's not a surprise being here at the ECB, but it's also, and above all, multidisciplinary, and it is uh, trying to animate the SRB as its uh, in-house think tank. I will tell you about four areas of work uh, on which we have been focusing these days. The first is on EMIR, the second is on the central counterparties, uh, the third is on commercial real estate vulnerabilities. The fourth is on investment fund risks. On all these issues, we have been always working with the entire membership. It has been, the concept has been, we are working on an equal basis with all the institutions of, uh, of the SRB. <coughs> Let me start with uh, EMIR. EMIR offers us big data. We get, uh, thanks to ESMA, 50 million data points per day. So first of all, it is an issue of finding a meeting point between market information and IT technology. And in fact, what we are doing is to create a, a supportive infrastructure which gives us the possibility not only to capture, but also to analyze in real time all this data. The question we have been asking ourselves is elementary, if you want. Is big data equal to big risks? But you can also, of course, question the same point in a positive terms. Is big data an opportunity to understand market dynamics using granular information which you never had. One point I would like you to bring home today is that Europe is making use of this information. Not only for research, which is of course necessary, but also for analysis and for policy response. What we are trying to do is to create an automatic monitoring which will permit us to have, at the beginning of every day, after the data have been browsed overnight, a number of informations about possible vulnerabilities which have been accumulating in the market. To this aim, we are currently identifying risk indicators we have done with our institutions, but we are very willing to cooperate with anybody who would like to help us on this. And the ambition is to work on this data with our institutions, but also with the researchers and policy institutions worldwide. Let me turn to the second point, <coughs> central counterparties. CCPs are the new bleak players in town, but do we know them? There is a lot of data available thanks to, to the CPMI IOSCO disclosure framework, which is, has brought institution to publish statistical information in the respective websites. But these data are at times not consistent, and in any case, they have not been object so far of public discussion on financial stability terms. What we are doing is to set up indicators, we are doing once again collectively with our membership, which will be uh, eventually included in our risk dashboard 
we hope, as from next year. And what we have already done, we have brought together the CCPs to ensure we, as, we understand their, number, their numbers well. Let me now turn to the third area of work. It's about commercial real estate. Now, <clears throat> we have recently heard from the largest uh, operator in the market worldwide that out of the 10 prime commercial real estate destinations, was price has been particularly buoyant this year, eight are in Europe, eight out of 10. So Europe is catching up rapidly in terms of prime commercial real estate. This is of course a sign that the crisis to a certain extent in its most acute uh, manifestation is finished. This is good, but it is also bad, maybe. Because, of course, this is also a sign of search for yield. Because uh, the risks of volatility exist, in particular in a situation where, in some cases, in really prime destination, more than half of investment comes from outside the European Union, which basically means that this money could fly if market conditions changed. Certainly, there is a common phenomenon occur across Europe, which is typically concentrated in capitals, but also in many other important business locations. And what we are doing is we're trying to anal analyze numbers there where exist. We have been issuing a recommendation last year to close data gaps in terms of the so-called collateral stretch, which basically means try to understand what happens to prices, in terms of the financial stretch. So we are trying to understand whether not only banks, but also insurance and pension funds and other investors uh, are strong enough to possible uh, withstand pressure in the market. In terms of income and financials, because we want to see whether those who are in the market are able uh, to uh, earn the sufficient money to repay the debt, and of course, in terms of spillovers. The, the fourth and last area where we have been working is investment fund risk. Now, this is a, a tremendously large and also controversial issue where you will hear very different views according to whether you are speaking to policymakers or to market. Of course, I'm representing here the policymaking uh, uh, community. What we see is that this is a booming industry. You can see it from the shadow banking monitoring, uh, which has been presented uh, yesterday uh, to, to you. And we have to ask ourselves two questions. The first one is, are investment funds presenting and generating risks per se? But even if it's not the case, the second question is, are the risks which would be possibly amplified due to the investment fund industry? Think about the possible negative externalities of fire sales. And the issues at stake here are the liquidity conditions, the possible excessive leverage, and the quality of stress, stress testing. This is all work which uh, is now being performed, so do not expect policy announcements on these today or in the next weeks. But work will continue in the next months to the technical, technical and policy bodies of the European Systemic Risk Board and the institutions be belong to it. And now I would like to give the floor to Andrea Ria, Chair of the European Banking Authority for the first session on the challenges and the future of banking in the European Union. Thank you very much and welcome.